Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhere Bagga. And like whole week, I have been trying to put up some amazing matches of Vichy Anand, uh, trying to analyze them, study those uh, impressive games. Uh, today again, I'm back with one of them. Now, this one was played against Bologan Victor, who became Grandmaster in 1991. Now, he was facing Anand, a much stronger opponent, uh, even rating-wise. If you see, the difference was over 100. And this was uh, played in 2003. Now, Anand was playing as white. And uh, here, Bologan played the Karukan. Now, I'll tell you why this wasn't successful. But now, before we start with the game, I request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily without a miss. So, let's begin with the game. Here, uh, Anand starts off with e4, the king's pawn opening. And... Uh, Bologan plays the Karukan by playing c6. Uh, now the main move, d4, trying to go for center by the An by Vishy Anand. And now uh, Bologan plays uh, d5, standard move in the Karukan. Now this can become exchange variation if Anand takes the pawn or uh, the advanced variation if Anand advances. Or what Anand does was the main line by developing the knight on c3. Uh, so here Bologan takes, which is the right move as per the Karukan as well. Uh, Anand takes back with the knight. And here uh, starts the downfall uh, for Bologan, I would say, because in the Karukan, it's important to take develop your bishop uh, early in the game so that then you can play pawn forward on e6, develop the knight, develop the bishop, uh, uh, and then uh, connect both the knights, get your queen active, and then either right diagonal. Now, Bologan did, did most of the things right, but here he started off with knight to d7, uh, which hinders the path of the bishop straight away. So, not developing the bishop in the right frame was the first mistake Bologan did here. And Anand just went with knight on g5. Now, that's a sort of an inaccuracy as well because you generally don't see uh, the move knight to g5. A reason is simple. You don't want to move, keep moving the same piece uh, in the opening. And Anand has already moved it thrice here. Uh, so, that's a bit strange. But Anand went ahead with this, maybe with the ideas of a quick attack with queen and bishop coming out early, attacking uh, the f7 straight away. So, uh, knight to f6 by Bologan here. Anand develops the bishop now on d3. Maybe I the just the h7 eventually for the long run. Also developing the bishop, which is the right move. Uh, here, Bologan plays e6, trying to take out his dark square bishop now. Of course, the light square bishop will be trapped for a longer time. Also, since you have played uh, c6, it would be tough to even free and care of the bishop because still c6 would be a hindrance uh, if you really want to target the long, uh, the, the long diagonal. Here, uh, Anand go, goes with knight to f3. Uh, Bologan develops the uh, bishop on d6 uh, and preparing to castle uh, as early as possible. Uh, Anand gets queen on e2. Now, queen on e2 indicates a couple of stuff. Uh, you might be just looking forward to developing the bishop next and then casting on the queen side. Because if, you were, if your plans were straight of casting on the king side, you could have done it straight away. But since you developed the queen, you have some different intentions. Maybe even to just delay casting and see what your, or your opponent is trying to do and then uh, some change of plans. Uh, here, since the knight was standing from long on g5, Bologan played h6 trying to just kick this knight away, which goes back on e4. And now knights were traded and Anand takes back with the queen, which was again the right move. Uh, now, if you see, the battery is also already lined up. And if you are just a bit casual here and just castle, that's going to be mate in one. So uh, that's how you can actually play against the Karukan 2. Uh, but generally, you don't fall for it. And the best move in the situation is to get the knight active, which defends uh, the h7, attacks the queen, uh, also clears up the path for the bishop in the long run. If you just try to happen to play on forward somehow by placing your queen up, then uh, there are a couple of defenses to it, uh, bishop and the queen. So then you can even go for a trade uh, and then make sure that your bishop gets developed and tries to pin the knight uh, or just take it as well. Uh, here in the game, uh, the knight was not played. Uh, in, instead, uh, queen to c7 by Bologan. And Anand castles. Now there's no threat uh, despite casting here because if the bishop takes, you can take back with the knight. So the knight is the defender. So there's no issues uh, with castling here. Also, even if you dislodge the knight, the bishop is ahead in the battery, which means uh, even if a check comes, say a random move by Anand, uh, I'll just play. I'll just show it to you what I meant here. 
even if you can take a pawn here, that's not a big advantage because once you side step, there's no threats. So uh, see, this is a slight advantage, of course, because you have opened up the edge file that would be there, but it's not a checkmating threat, which is the case on the opposite side of the board. Uh, now let's go back in the game uh, where after castling, uh, Bologan plays b6, trying to free and get out the bishop, and then maybe play pawn forward with a discover attack on the queen. Anand sees that and plays queen to g4 straight away, not letting, sh making sure that uh, the bishop doesn't uh, come on b7 for the discovery attack later on. Also, simultaneously attacking the pawn on g7. Now here, uh, g5 by Bologan, trying to just gain some uh, space on the king side, going for an attack. But the problem with this attack is your king is still in the center. You haven't castled. Uh, if you would have placed your bishop and castled, this would have been in favor of black because you are attacking aggressively. But now since you haven't castled, the game is in favor of white uh, and rightly so. Here, Anand gets his queen backwards, making sure that the pawns are not pushed forward as well. Uh, even a pawn forward move doesn't matter now because Anand can simply take. So it doesn't help Bologan at all. So uh, Bologan decides to get his rook first on g8, making uh, planning to play pawn forward next maybe. Uh, but here, Anand just disregards that move and just plays rook to e1, just trying to make sure that the king, which is vulnerable there in the center, can be attacked further. Now, uh, bishop goes back. Here, if uh, Anand, actually if Anand would have taken the pawn here, that can be bad because suddenly bishop comes back and then you are just running away with your queen somewhere. Uh, suppose you just try, you can't take the pawn of course, uh, and if you try and come back, then pawn forward would mean you will lose the knight. Uh, or you can just place your queen here and exchange queens. So this is not going to be good for uh, white here. So you have to be careful if you just are going being greedy uh, for the pawns. So rook came and then bishop came back uh, on the f7 defending the pawn. Uh, here, uh, queen comes now on f5. To be noticed, uh, the queen can't be taken because of the pin. So that's why rook on e1, when your opponent hasn't castled, is an amazing move. And that and suddenly followed up with the queen on f5, you generally don't see such aggressive moves uh, in normal games. Here, uh, bishop to g7 uh, by Bologan, just trying to consolidate the position and eyeing the diagonal, uh, going for the pawn maybe later on. And Anand doesn't give her uh, any uh, bothering about that uh, bishop uh, move and just plays h4, uh, going for the pawn break and maybe then get his knight active because then uh, he can be attacking the f7 more strongly. So pawn forward and uh, finally uh, Bologan has to move the king to make sure that uh, the pin is no longer there and you're attacking the queen as well. So king moves on f8, now queen goes back on h3. And if you're simultaneously noting, noticing this uh, evaluation bar, it is side, suddenly turning more and more in favor of Anand as the game proceeds. It started off with 0.3 odd uh, on the 12th move, and now it has gone to 1.4. So that's how you slowly grip on the position, and this is not a casting, this is the reverse order. So you're not helping your position at all. Uh, and now uh, that's a, a decent move by Bolokan, trying to just get que uh, the rook in front of the queen. So that once the exchanges happen, queen have to move, but that was okay with Anand. So Anand takes the pawn uh, and then captures back, Bologan captures back, and then queen side steps uh, from the edge file, which was required. And then pawn to c5 by Bologan. Again, a move which doesn't help his position uh, improvement because he could have first developed the bishop and then went for it. Uh, but instead he just plays pawn forward uh, now, Anand takes with the bishop. He could have taken with the queen as well, but he's just trying to get one more piece into the attack. As you see, uh, Anand has got four pieces uh, that are actually near to the king, opponent's king, with, uh, which can come into the game very quickly and attack. And, and if you see the other side of the board, uh, the opponent's pieces are pretty much passive there, not attacking much. Uh, also, the knight is defending the h2, so there's no threats here with the queen and the rook combination as well. So finally, uh, Bologan takes the center pawn uh, and Anand doesn't bother to taking it back with the queen, but just uh, gets his other rook centralized, getting all your pieces into the game for the attack. 
and then he goes for the kill later on. So bishop comes on b7, eyeing the diagonal, maybe trying to uh, eliminate the knight from there so that a quick uh, attack can be possible on the h2. But that's also not very helpful, even if Anand misses that out. Uh, bishop takes the knight, queen takes back. And then if you try to give a check, this, it's not no harm because you can just move simply on f1. The f1 square is vacant because the rook was moved. And then you can just get your king up and just, just slide it uh, safely and slowly to the c1 eventually, which will, which will be a relatively uh, safer square because queen is already uh, would have been uh, dislocated from the original position. Also, the c2 is protected with the bishop. So even if your king is on c1, that would be pretty safe. So that is not going to help his position and it's 6.1 in favor of white. And why is so? Anand shows it rightly in the next move. He takes on the pawn with the rook, just trying to open up the position. Now that's a strange move. You would say you are just going to lose a rook for nothing, but it's not actually nothing. Because after rook takes, you give another piece. And that's the beauty of Vishy Anand. He just gives you pieces for like, like free for like uh, that matter. And this, after you just take the bishop, uh, Anand takes the bishop back with queen. Uh, and now if you just go back on the any of the piece uh, or any of the squares, you lose a rook and then you will never win this game. So the only move which makes sense here was king to uh, d6. That's what Bologan does. And then uh, knight takes on uh, d4 now so that the bishop is also not going to take on the knight. Otherwise, the king can be wide open. If you don't take the pawn here and play something else, a uh, knight can be taken. And after you do take, just in case, you will be losing out your queen. So that was a threat. Swanan saw that coming. And that's why I took on the pawn first. Uh, also getting his knight into activity. And it can lead into a good folk as well in the next move. So Bologan sees that and plays a queen to c5. Here Anand plays bishop on f5. Now you will be thinking, why is he hanging all the pieces? Because if pawn takes, then what? Then there's no problem. If pawn takes, you can still give a check. And that's a check with a couple of pieces, which means king has to be moved. And there are just a couple of squares where king can go. And if king goes by mistake on the c6, that's mate in one. Because queen takes knight is mate. There's no squares for the king remaining. Uh, and knight cannot be captured because the queen is hanging diagonal. So just one bad move here can lead you to checkmate in one. So Bologan goes to the right uh, square instead in the game, which was, uh, uh, so he doesn't take the uh, bishop here. And then uh, instead plays queen to e5, maybe just hoping for a queen trade finally, uh, which of course uh, Anand disregards again and, by, and plays knight to f3, attacking the queen. Simultaneously, it's a check. So the queen is going to hang up immediately anyhow. So it gets to get the queen in between, which can be now captured. But again, it's Anand who's playing, so he'll not just let you win in the position as well. He first gives a check, pushes the king backwards, and then finally takes on the queen as well. Uh, now bishop takes the rook. Uh, Anand gives another check with the queen. Now uh, it's an over game, I would say, because yes, the opponent has got two rooks, but queen from Anand is pretty strong and aggressive uh, even the knight uh, isn't doing much for the opponent the light square bishop will not be of much help as well because at max you can't even actually take the pawn here because that is again troubles if you just happen to take this suppose i uh, play a passive uh, whose turn it was it was uh, black turn so if why am i not able to take the pawn here okay uh but it was check okay so he sidesteps here uh, on d6 and again a check goes back and now if you play, say, bishop over here and you're trying to take on this pawn, that's a bad move because a move like pawn forward traps your bishop eventually. Uh, it's not going to go out of this pawn chain. You cannot even come back and take this because bishop is guarding it. So just making sure that one more piece of the opponent is becoming inactive for the rest of the game. Uh, so here, uh, Anand instead uh, tries to exchange the bishops of, of the board. Uh, Bulgan can't afford to do that. So then... Uh, uh, Anand plays uh, knight to h4, going for a good check with the knight next. Uh, and here, uh, that's why uh, Bologan gets his rook on g8, making sure that the knight cannot come. But it can still because the bishop is also there. So a check uh, by Anand, also blocking the file uh, 
so that there's no checkmating attacks uh, or any aggressive moves by Bologan. Here, queen goes uh, to f7, attacking the rook. So the rook has to be saved. And of course, it has to come back on to uh, e8 in order to protect e6. Otherwise, queen can eventually take on e6 by first taking the bishop, then pawn takes back, and then you can take as well. So Anand now just tries to go from the other way. Now eyeing the bishop to go to b5 and then attack the knight. That can be a checkmate if queen takes, of course. Uh, so that was the last move in the game where Bologan sees the situation that it's not possible to win it from here and resigns. Now, uh, this is how Anand can be so aggressive in games and just bog you down uh, like anything. So don't take him for any uh, grant that he cannot be aggressive. He can be super aggressive. He can just sacrifice a rook like he showed in this game. Uh, generally, we talk about Mikhail Tal, uh, the best man to sacrifice pieces. But now look at this for a sacrifice. You just make the king uh, wide open by just taking on a pawn, center pawn, and giving up your rook. Uh, and then even hang your bishop later on to win a back the bishop. And then uh, followed up with the beautiful attacks all over the place getting all the pieces into the activity despite having lesser number of pieces and you win up the game like that. I hope you like the video. Do let me know your feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by now. And thanks for watching. See you tomorrow again with one of the fantastic games Anand has ever played. Thanks for time. Take care. Bye-bye.